the first step and the second step. Learn your area, learn your new marketing strategy, go ham. And then number three, Welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Today's show is all about the three things that you must do when starting over in a brand new market and building your business from the ground up. This episode <laughs> applies to agents who are starting over in a new market or new agents. Maybe you're new and you're like, I don't know how to build from the ground up. Perfect. This is for you. Today's guest is Ali Garcet. And your, your host, your co-host, and what she is doing is going over her exact process of how she's building in her new market. And y'all know that Allie has done over 100 transactions in less than three years. Her very first year in real estate, within eight months, she made over $100,000 in GCI as a part-time agent. She was still active duty in the Air Force. And then her second year in the game, she earned ICON which EXP or EXPers, if that's a word, know that that is like a really, really big deal. And she earned over $200,000 in GCI almost exclusively by doing referrals. So total, she's done over a hundred transactions in, in less than three years. And then I'm also here to give my, my little feedback because y'all know that I also changed markets recently. So Allie and I are going through this rebuild together. So I'm piping in with my two cents as well, an experience that I've learned from over 570 transactions as a solo agent, team leader, or investor. So it is going to be the most fun show ever and expect to learn the exact steps and that's it. Let's get it started. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> gold miners, welcome. Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to to the show. Ali, okay, you just moved to a brand new market. I just moved to a brand new market kind of. And so now we're getting set up, you know, from the ground up. We, you know, don't know anything about the city as if kind of like a new agent. Maybe, you know, a lot of new agents out there just got their license and they're like, what do I do? How do I get set up to be an actual real estate agent here? And shout out to Tori, Tori Burgess, this question came from her inspired by you beautiful lady out in pensacola florida lady that felt weird okay <laughs> what a beautiful lady what a beautiful lady <laughs> but okay she Allie, is beautiful <laughs> she is beautiful yeah pensacola referral send it to tori but okay jo Allie, join us at five pillars we're gonna hit on you <laughs> <laughs> it's it is creepy and it is weird but you will get used to it <laughs> Okay, but Ali, so I'm asking you, I'm asking you the questions. I'm the fucking captain of this ship. Yes, my right now for today. <laughs> so Ali, what actions are you doing now to get set up? Yeah. So overall, I I'm I'm doing three major bullet points that I want to go over. So the first thing when you move to a new location, especially if you don't know anybody, especially if you've never been there before, you don't know shit about, you know, the area or the trends, is learn that. You know, number one is learn the city, the surrounding cities, the boroughs, wherever you're at, and the trends. And don't forget about learning how to actually pronounce it the way that the locals do. <laughs> this sounds like so minor, but especially here in St. Paul, like in, in Minnesota, and I think very much so in the northeastern part of the country as well, a lot of Indian tribes like named the cities. So you don't think that you're pronouncing it the you think that you're pronouncing it the right way and it's fucking wrong. <laughs> there are so many cities. Like there are a lot of I'm going on a tangent here, but a lot of Instagram accounts that Brit who's from Minnesota follows and it's these like funny things. Oh, pronounce this city and you see it in writing and it's not how it's pronounced whatsoever. So learn that because there's no bigger giveaway that you're not from this area, you don't know shit about the area than you pronouncing an entire city incorrectly. So that's number one, maybe buy like a, or maybe you don't even have to buy it, but like print out a zip code map of an area that you want to target, which like, obviously find drive around the area, see which areas you want to target and then learn which zip codes there are, learn what the, the subdivisions are. Just like get yourself familiarized with the actual location. 
So the hoods, the cities, the zip codes, the pronunciations, and the trends. That's still, this is still like a number one. So as soon as you get your, your license in that area, you're going to have access to the MLS. Look at the MLS and look at the trends. What are the average price points, the median price points, days on market? And I don't mean study yourself to death because you can go down the rabbit hole big on this one. I mean, common days on market. Very, very simple. Common, like what most common price point. So that way, you know, oh, if we're talking about St. Paul, like lower town, this is what we're talking about. Or if we're talking about the suburbs of Edina, which is one of the cities here, E-D-I-N-A. I was like, oh, yeah, Edina. And everyone's like, no, it's Edina. I'm like, what in the fuck? All right, cool, Edina. <laughs> like just, you know, base from a 30,000 foot view, you know? Oh, yeah, this is kind of like where how fast the market is. Buyers or sellers market. That's like overall number one. Now, of course, that's a lot of shit. You know, you have to get licensed in that area, obviously. And I'm going to go into how to, how to help more, like how, what am I trying to say? Yeah. Like how to more help <laughs> that like number one bullet in my number two and number three bullets. <laughs> Shelby's cracking up behind the scenes. <laughs> words. We're so yeah. good at words. Let's be fucking podcast hosts. Great. <laughs> Let's just hit on people instead. That's easier. <laughs> Oh, dude. Okay. I'm glad that you're going to dig into more on the how, because that's what I was going to say from a listener's perspective. I'm like, okay, you know, you did, you mentioned the MLS, absolutely digging in there, finding trends, getting a, you know, pulse on it. And you also mentioned Instagram channel. So in the other two, you're going to dig into a little bit more of the how to learn the area, right? Yeah. Yeah. They all kind of go like hand in hand, these three, the tripod, you know, to that way. So for you to make sense of your new area. (laughs) Okay. So I'm going to go to, oh, well, I'm going to, okay. I want to add my, yes, captain. can I, fucking yes, add captain. My okay. <laughs> Just to add on this, I'm not going to go deep, but I, I agree with Allie. Shocking. I agree with her. Although I do <laughs> like it when I disagree, that's fun. But this time I agree. And so with the pronunciation, yeah, same thing within Lexington. I have a, a story, Ver- Versailles, you know, like the city of Versailles, like it's French, right? They call it Versailles here. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's fucking Kentucky. We call it Versailles. <laughs> I was like, y'all, this is so bad. But the other thing you mentioned, just driving around and like getting a feel for it. So and printing out the map. So we did that. We have this big map in our dining room because we never use our dining room. So it's on the wall there. And then also got a local, well, my dad's wife, she's a local, to drive us around. We like had the map on our lap and she was going around. And so we're, you're orienting and then you're asking questions and you're getting like some of the behind the scenes and it's, oh, this restaurant's coming here or, oh, the city is actually, you know, kind of like a wagon wheel and you can follow the spokes. So it's just those things have been helpful for me too. But I'm not going to say too much more because Allie's in the tripod in the freaking the Eiffel Tower that she's going here. She is going to explain all of the more things. So anyway, no, that's no, that's, that's that, super helpful. Where, okay. <laughs> where, how did you find the map or did you just find one online on Google image and print it out, blow it up? So I was originally going to, but back when I first moved here, my dad is, he's just so extra. He brought like maps and things to know about Lexington. And we weren't getting our license at this point. So we're like, this is just fucking garbage. I mean, it's exciting, but it's not, Thanks, it doesn't Dad. have the meeting. <laughs> and, and so I was about to order one and then I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure my dad sent me, got me this already. And that's exactly what it was. So thanks dad. Thanks dad. But you could easily go on Google map, not Google maps, Amazon and just buy one. Yeah. There are so many different types of maps on there. Yeah. Like a zip code, like color coded. It's, it's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks dad. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Shout okay. out, Dad. This Shout episode is sponsored by Dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna love in the beginning us hitting on girls. He's gonna be like, "That's my girl." <laughs> but... Shitting in sinks and hitting on women. <laughs> yep. Oh, <laughs> flashback to episode one. Okay, no, no one then... needs to go there. Okay, yeah, let's keep <laughs> moving on. Move forward. <laughs> the the second tri of the tripod is obviously lead gen. You need to find clients, so you need to know where the hell you are which is learning the area. That's number one. Number two is you need to find clients in wherever you want to focus on. So a portion of this is taken by Alex Hormozzi, which both of us love. He talks about the lead gen quadrant. So think of a quadrant and there is one to one. There's one to many. There's hot leads and there's cold leads. So those are each of the four quadrants. I highly suggest you're, and this is what I'm doing. You do at least focus on one, one one-to-one, like you and one other person alone. And I'll go into more of those later. And then 
also simultaneously working on one to many because it's going to go so, so slow if you just focus on one to one. I mean, I'm sorry, if you just focus on one to many. So have both of those working. So don't just focus on one type of lead gen. I say focus on two. I think anything more than two is just going to be a little bit too much. This is my own op opinion. So pick two. That way, as you're doing your one-to-one, -one, you have your one-to-many working in the background, or at least like it's, it's, you know, simultaneously working together. So some examples of one-to-one -one are DMs on your Instagram to people, you know, your sphere to strangers. It could be open houses, door knocking, cold calling. Those are all one-to-one -one where you can't scale that but that one-to-one -one is needed. You're going to need to talk to somebody one-to-one -one in order to get a closing. So that is necessary. It is just slower. So open houses for sure. And I'll get more into that, like how to find open houses later. Door knocking, obviously at that point, you've already familiarized with the area, you know, which areas to door knock or not to door knock, et cetera. The one-to-many, some examples of those are social media, YouTube, which are different, buyer and seller seminars, mailers, running ads. So that's all where you're doing effort one time and it's going to many, many, many people. But because it's going to many, unless they seriously are ready to purchase and or sell like right now, you're going to need to then convert those one to many to one to one. So choose one in each category, no right or wrong, just as long as you are fucking consistent, then you're going to get leads. So any questions on that yet captain shelby your personal strategy is my question how are you going to do it i am doing youtube 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 for my one to many i like it i have a good system down you know i use vid chops i have a consistent day that i record i already have like tons of videos to make and specifically i'm actually testing something else out now i know that my my previous channel, which like has gotten pretty good results, but it was mainly focused on buyers. So I'm testing this one on sellers. I'm not going to give the name of my channel because that fucks up the, the algorithm. So please do not look for me, please. I'll just tell you exactly what I'm doing. Just don't look, don't look for me. <laughs> and so in this one, I'm focusing on a lot of different questions that I'm answering for the public of how to sell your home. And I'll get into the specific, well, I can get into the specific videos now. So you know what? Let me scroll down here on my notes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here are some titles of videos that I have already recorded. And by the way, I am not yet a fully licensed agent in Minnesota. So I do not have my channel even public. I am having these like in the bank. So that way, as soon as I am legally allowed to start marketing, they're all going to fucking go public and it's just going to go ham. So some videos are, is now a good time to sell in St. Paul, Minnesota? Is it better to sell your home in the winter or the summer in St. Paul? Is your equity safe in Minneapolis or in Minnesota or wherever your city is? How much will you net when you're selling your home in insert city? Top three things to never do when selling your house. Five things you must do when selling your house. Top five things to prep you know, to get your house ready to sell. Top five mistakes, you know, like anything like that, like anything related to selling. And just Google it and then your questions are going to pop up and then answer those fucking questions. So that's what I'm doing. And while I'm on this rant, I, I listened to an episode of some like gym sales podcast because I like getting my inspiration from like other industries as well. And I got like a pretty good one for shorts. This one super applies for if you're work, if you're going to be looking to do Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, like these short reels, the top three ways to create hooks that go viral are if you focus on something controversial, that's number one, like a of controversial hook. So for example, in real estate, it could be something like, why the FHA loan is the worst loan to accept if you're selling a house. You know, like just something just way controversial or holy shit, why does she have such a strong ass opinion on this? I need to figure out why. Number two is something super negative, such as, Stop wasting your money on these three things when you're listing your home for sale. Or number three, the third one is an extremely positive thing. So this one secret helped my seller net an extra $20,000.
something like that. So those will, those are more so for short tent, for short content, but you can also make those longer into, into longer YouTube videos. Any questions so far before I continue on this little rabbit hole? On the specific rabbit hole for lead gen? Yes. No, no, no questions. I really love all of those titles. Those were very catchy. And I, yeah, it's, it's I can just see how it would be very interesting as a seller in, you know, words. Yeah, they're good. They're yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. good, Allie. Words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <We're good. laughs> so, so I'm like taking those and I'm going to go into that resource of where I got that, that information from the inspo from at the end where I get my resources from, but I'm taking those like YouTube videos what I, of what I'm doing on YouTube value fucking first never introduce yourself because nobody gives a shit nobody gives a rat's ass who you are they want to they clicked on your video to answer to get their question answered so you already made a good title answer the question and the more value you give you can introduce yourself at the end maybe in the middle so what i'm doing in both like short form content and long form content i never introduce myself in the beginning absolutely not i will pretty much answer their question well, first I'm going to repeat the question. So like you click on this video, this is what I'm going to answer. Hey, these are the top five mistakes you could make when you're selling your house in the summer or, you know, whatever it is. And then I'm going to sneak in a CTA. You know, if you have any other questions by the end of this call, you can book a call with the link below and that's it. Like literally that's it. And then I'm going to the value. So I'm going to answer it. If you ever have a list, like a top five or top seven, top three, whatever, always go backward five, four, three, two, one. Cause the, the suspense is there more. We're like, Oh my God, babe, but what's, what's number one. You know, what is that number one thing that I need to avoid making a mistake on? And then at the very, very end, that's when I'll be like, by the way, my name is Ali Garcet. If you couldn't tell I'm a real estate agent, I do these calls every single day. So please book a call with the link below. If you have any other questions, I look forward to helping you shit like that. Short form content. I wouldn't even do that. Don't even do that. If they want to know more, you don't have to introduce yourself. They're going to, f they're going to look at your page and decide there, should they follow you so they can get more. So I would suggest if you're only going to be doing short form content, which I don't even suggest that, but whatever, it's something it's, it's a lot more time consuming. If you're just doing shorts, don't ever introduce yourself, give the value, give the call to action. That's it. Yeah. So that is the content and my YouTube strategy. So that's all one to many. I'm also going to be doing one to one which I'm continuing to do from the beginning of when I became a licensed agent, which is DMs on Facebook, on Instagram, and texting my phone. Like literally people that already know me because I majority of the income that I make right now is outbound referrals. So um, if it were just inbound referrals, then I would obviously just continue doing the same thing. Just focus on, do you know of anybody looking to buy or sell? You know, obviously more questions like that related to my city. That's what I'm doing personally, one to many and one to one. I love it. This is so fun. It's so fun for us coming into a new market, having already gone through, you know, the trials and tribulations of figuring this shit out the first time, because it helps you be so much more strategic the second time and think about what, what do I really want? <laughs> what type of people do I want? What type of activities do I want to do every day? How can I reach, just like you said, one action reaching many people as opposed to one to one? Because now it's like, I look back to, you know, door knocking, for instance, and which is something I never fucking did. I don't know why I chose that example. But, <laughs> you know, when you think about the efficiencies of it, it's like you're door knocking a pool. You don't know if they're looking to sell unless you're like you targeted, you know, whatever. Normally, you're just like door knocking your farming neighborhood, right? You have no idea if they want to buy, sell or invest. They're probably not going to be home. And you're walking <laughs> like usually from one house to the other or driving. And that is just like so much time. And it's so not strategic because you don't know. And of course, everyone can. They're like, oh, well, that conversation could lead to, you know, X, Y, and Z. And yes, it could. Absolutely. But for instance, in yours, it's like, you are targeting people who are actively searching for what you are, tr are trying to provide value on. And so you already know that they're one step closer down the funnel than those people who you just randomly might knock on their door. So did that make sense? Anyway, okay, <laughs> Ali, I think your strategy is great. Would you like to know mine if I can get it out? <laughs> Yes, please, please. <laughs> okay, because I'm totally with you in the one to many. And I kind of made a list before I decided on what I wanted to do for my lead gen. And like you said, so there's there's one to many and there's one to one. I I thought of it more of there's lead generation and then brand building. 
with lead generation being like, how can I bring in new leads now? People who are interested in buying, selling, investing for me, specifically selling, that's what I'm doing, versus brand building. It's like activities that I'm doing now that over time will switch the little pendulum, teeter-totter, whatever, from having to do so much lead gen to having people attracted to me, my brand, all that stuff. So that's kind of how I categorized it. But within my lead gen, of course, that's what I was thinking too. It's I'm not, I'm not doing one-to-one. I mean, I am, I'm definitely going to do it, but that's not going to be how my primary, I have to do one to many. And for me in particular, I didn't want to focus on buyers because for every, you know, if you target sellers, you're still going to get buyers. You're still going to get sellers who like, yeah, I want to sell, but I also want to buy or my friend or whatever. So 100% targeting sellers for me. And then it must cast like a wide net. You know, I don't want to like what I've done in the past, it's, it's, I feel like my net has been smaller. Like I want to cast a really fucking wide net to pull in as many people as possible. And then I don't want to deal with cold leads. Like I don't like convincing people that I am, you know, the best thing ever. I want them to be sold on me. Right. And then I also don't want to chase people. There's, this was my wish list. It's kind of like ridiculous, but I don't want to chase people. Like I want to have people come to us. Like I want to attract them. And then I want it to be as efficient as possible. So when I do attract people, I would like to be talking to many people and not just one at a time. And then a bonus thing on my wish list is that I don't want to leave the house. (laughs) So people are like, we like, even right now, dude, like I put on sticky boobs right before this. So my nips weren't popping through, but otherwise I'm like, you know, (laughs) pants, maybe I don't, I don't want to have to leave the house. I like it here. I'm a little hermit. I'm a little cave troll these days. So anyway, that is kind of what's my lead generation requirement, my checklist, right? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Similar to Shelby, I too want a man in finance. Six five blue eyes. Have you seen that trend? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Trust funds. <laughs> Don't yeah. want to leave the house. <laughs> well, I feel like yours is, I mean, our, our strategies are different, but they're similar in the fact that you're also talking to sellers. You're also doing one to many. You don't want to talk to cold leads. You want people to watch your videos and warm up to you and be sold on you after watching three videos to be like, oh, Ali, I like you already. Not when you call someone cold and they're like, who the fuck are you, Allie? Like, why? No, get the- it's a just a completely different conversation. And so, yeah, we want all the things, but I think it is possible. Um, and so what we're doing, we being me and Drake, is that we are doing, you know this, we are doing webinars. We're doing seller seminars, webinars. And how we're going to do this is like our topic as of now, which I'm going to go back and look at your topics and see if I want to tweak it at all. But it's five mistakes to avoid when selling your home in 2024. Might be like five costly mistakes to avoid. I don't know. Something like that. It's like the five mistakes that you want to avoid, right? And we're doing this webinar and we haven't decided if we're going to do it like weekly, twice a month. It will depend. But we are running ads on Meta, Facebook. Facebook primarily, maybe Instagram, to this specific seller class, five mistakes to avoid. And so it's going to be pushed out, which we are going to spend probably a couple thousand dollars. We might start with a thousand dollars on ads and we're condensing it. It's not like the class is going to be two weeks out. It's four days from now. So that way, because if it's too far out, people are, it's going to go on their calendar and they're going to be like, wait, what is this? What did I sign up for? So it's going to be short. We're running ads to this webinar. And then when they get there, it's going to be an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And It's going to be the five mistakes to avoid. And just like Ali said, it's going to be super value packed and just information, information, but also personality and engagement with people in the chat. And we, we did a masterclass on this and based on our ads, we we expect to get probably a hundred people coming to this webinar, which is a lot. That's (laughs) awesome. Well, I mean, who knows? We're going to try and, you know, just for Tori, for pretty Tori, we're going to (laughs) continue doing updates. You know, Allie and I both will on what's working, what's not. 
but you get, you know, a hundred people to this and engage. And then by the end of that, they're no longer cold. They have listened to you for an hour, an hour and a half. You're doing this Q and A, you're talking about their person. You're providing so much value by the end. It's you want to know about your personal situation, dude, I'd love to help you, you know, book a call. And so it's the call to action to just book a 15 minute call with the intent of booking a listing appointment, right? So that's kind of our funnel. We're pushing to the masses via Facebook. People are coming in, they're registering. And by the way, this is super techie behind the scenes because that's something else that I don't want to do like I've done before, like the chasing people. And so once they sign up on the landing page for the webinar, they register, then there's automated follow-up, which is the email reminders, the calendar invite, the texts, like the whole fucking thing leading up to the event. And it's set up so when they join the event, they have to type in their phone number to enter the actual Zoom. And all of this is built through Go High Level. So Go High Level knows who specifically has attended the Zoom, and it moves it down a pipeline within our CRM. So it's registered. And then if they attend, it goes to attended. And then if they book a call, again, through Go High Level, which is, it's basically a Calendly, then it moves down the pipeline and, you know, that sort of, but then if they don't show, they go on the automation that goes to watch the replay, book the Calendly. So all of this is automatically moving through the pipeline on all of the different scenarios, attended, booked call, listing appointment, or not attended, replay, book a call. You get the point. And if they don't show, there's also the, you can always attend our next webinar. So it's, it's very automated behind the scenes, but I can do all of this. I choose the time. And then I choose when I allow them on my calendar to book the calls for, you know, once they book the appointment, I'm with them to set the, the listing appointment, which we can decide when works. It's just so much more control than if you are working with a buyer who's, I want to see this house now. And you're like, fuck, I am not in the headspace, you know, or whatever the case may be. It's just, I want control of my destiny this time around. So that is how we're doing the the lead gen, how we're moving people through the funnel. And then when it comes to one-on-one, of course, one-on-ones are a part of that process, but also I've decided that I'm going to just continue on Instagram the way I used to back in the day where it's not so much as a specific lead gen. Cause you know, within Instagram, there's like the lead generation strategy, but then there's also like the personal brand that's more like the lead gen is usually like you have a target audience, you're educating, you're talking about your specific city, whatever, you know, Ali and I, we just talked about this the other day, but I guess they weren't there. So, but for me, it's not going to be that it's going to be the personal behind the scenes, share my story and engage that way. And I'm just going to do those two for now. We're going to see how the seller seminar goes, because I don't want to add on more than that. Honestly, if, if all goes well with the seller seminars, like, fuck, I'm not going to have time <laughs> to do anything else besides go to these, uh, these fucking appointments. So that's the plan. That's amazing. Okay. You mentioned a, a masterclass. Yes. Dive more into that. Yeah. So it's funny because they actually used their system on Drake. They used the exact same system that they provided to us to use, except the target audience was agents. So Drake saw an ad on Facebook register for our webinar masterclass. Have you wanted to give a home buyer seminar? Have you wanted to do a seller seminar and you don't know how to do it, you know, register for our class. And so, and and that's what it was. It was the registration and then it was the automated follow-up. And I showed up super skeptical because, you know, I fucking hate that shit, all of it usually. (laughs) And it was, it was valuable. I do think that, and by the way, it was five days. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it was. So the, when he got the ad, we went to the first um, class, which was Sunday evening. It's super skeptical. And the class was two fucking hours. It was too slow for me, but I think as you can see on my shirt that you got me, what does it say? It says I'm set at two times speed. Please speak faster. Allie got the shirt for me. It's my favorite shirt. I wear it every day. That's you why it smells. Shelby. It, they, it, oh, okay. Anyway. I'll oh, you it missed soon. it. I'll try to hit on you. Okay. Oh, okay. thank Continue. you. <laughs> oh, I feel so. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> so we went to the thing on Sunday and got like essentially the two hour pitch. And then they're like, we're actually doing a masterclass on this for the next five days from six to 8 PM, Monday through Friday. And it's going to teach you exactly how to set up a webinar in this automated way. Because I don't know if you remember this, Allie, Drake and I were going to do seller seminars before we went to this webinar, but we were going to do them in person. We were going to run ads and we were going to have people come. We were going to target old people who wanted like a little Sunday brunch. But the, if you think about it, the show up rate 
to something like that is way, way, way less. And then you're also having to deal with the logistics of finding a little venue, getting fucking donuts and coffee and how many people are going to show and is the room big enough? And then I have to leave the house. Oh no. So, <laughs> so we, we went to this webinar and yeah, I mean, it worked. They sold us on it and they provided quote unquote everything you need, but they made it, they didn't, they, and they tried to tell you know exactly what to do, but it's very complicated. The automations on the back end through Go High Level, it's very techy with the triggers and there's specific code built into it. And so I think that is part of their like upsell because at the end they're like, I'm oh gonna, we told you everything specifically to do, but just in case you don't have time or you don't want to do it yourself, we'll do it for you for fucking six grand or whatever it was. I think it was different levels, but like the, the highest one was like 12, the lowest one was like six or something like that. I could be butchering, butchering this. Don't fucking sue me if you listen to this. Masterclass people. But we didn't <laughs> do it because we have Drake and he's a fucking nerd. So, <laughs> but he's, if, if I was not a super nerd about all this stuff, he's like, there's no way that I would have been able to do this. So that was their whole pitch. But they did. They went through a lot of really good information about how to run the ads, how to set up the business page and run the ads and how much money you should put to, to it and how much you should see show up rate, booking rate, and then appointment show rate to close. Like they went through a whole funnel with that. They also went through one of the days for two hours was talking about the presentation itself and how to provide the value, but also do enough things that make people like feel like they need to book like the senses of urgency and how many times they said you have to put you have to put the link in the thing eight times which is like way most people would just wait till the end and be like hey book a call with me and they're like no you need to start within the first 10 minutes because some people leave early and you need to yeah. remind them it was it's very strategic which i really did appreciate also another thing i think i told you but they were like always do 7 p.m on a tuesday wednesday or thursday because they've split test a bunch of the dates and the times. And originally we were going to do 10 a.m. on a Saturday. So it, yeah. I'm happy about that. But they're like, those are the three, you know, those are the dates. Those are the times. But the other thing is never start on time. And Ali, I know this would bother you and I because we're super punctual and like the military background and all that stuff. But, you know, one of the things we actually bitch about Ali is like people always show up late. <laughs> yeah. People always show up late. And so he's never start on time. You're, what you're going to do is you're going to let people in to the webinar right at seven. And you're going to have a video countdown playing where it's, you're in the right spot. Welcome to our seller, you know, five mistakes to avoid. And it's going to have music and it's just going to be a five minute countdown, like on the screen with like music and pump and all that. And then you could get in the chats and then right at 705, you start. And what you do at 704, I think by the automation is you send out that final text. This is an automation. So it's going to happen automatically. But the text <laughs> is like, Hey, you know, if you weren't here right at seven, no worries. Still jump in anytime. You're not missing anything. And he says by 705, you get a wave more people because there's so many people who are like, fuck it's 702. I don't want to show up. I don't want to show up late if they've already started. Yeah. So that's pretty good strategy, right? Wow. Okay. So how much do they suggest that you put in toward ads? <sighs> okay. So on the ad day, it's definitely Drake's realm. We should get him on to ask right now he's camping. So he cannot be asked at this moment. But what he said is we're going to start with a thousand bucks for the first seminar and see what results it produces, because that's another thing that they did say. So in the class, it was primarily targeted towards buyers. They said some people do sellers, but most people do buyers. And so our results will probably be a little skewed. But for me, oh my God, if we even got one closing per webinar, just one, you know, because what it's 15 grand. For a thousand dollars of ad spend, you earn fifteen grand. It's I will take that any day of the week. Fuck yeah, I will. You know, shit. Even a referral. And then when you're in the webinar, mm -hmm. uh, being that you have to post shit eight times and like maybe answer questions that are in the chat, are you going to have mm -hmm. someone yeah. else moderate, or is that going to be Drake? I'm going to have Drake be my co-host. So they did. They okay. said you don't have to have a co-host, but they do recommend it, especially in the first couple of times, because you're going to be like thinking about the slides and it's a lot to try to manage the chat and engage and send the thing. So having a co-host and they said, if you're going to do a buyer, like the very easy one is to get your lender to do it and then split the ad spend. Smart. Shit. Right? I, nice. Yeah. 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 Even if you're going to be doing the listings, you know, I would still try to split it with the lender. If yeah. You, if they can find a buyer, you know? Fuck. Yeah. 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 So more questions. That's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's yeah. very, very techy. I'm, I'm so excited though, because I was, you know, I'm super systems oriented with like 
checklists and templates and processes. But now that I have someone who can automate them to a level that makes my head hurt, it's exciting. Do they use Zapier or how do they connect? How do they do the it's automations? All through Go High Level, all of it. Oh, okay. So the masterclass was specifically from Go High Level. They, so that is another way that they got money. Cause the whole time, you know, Drake and I are like watching their sales pitch, their strategy. Like, yeah. here, you know, when you see like people trying to pitch you and you're like, so into sales, you're like piecing apart all of it. So fun. But, <laughs> but so part of their pitch besides at the end, the white glove, like we'll do it for you was also go high level. So, you know, with go high level, I don't know if you know this, but you can spend, I think it's like $500 a month for the ability to sell it. So you create your own automations, your pipelines, whatever. And if you pay Go High Level, the company, $500 a month, you are then able to turn around and sell what you've created like an unlimited amount of times. And so they were charging, they said, you know, we'll give it the first seven days free so you can see what we've built in Go High Level for you. And then if you want to keep using it, it's $75 a month for a subscription, which is really smart because $75 a month for a subscription of go high level is cheap. And for them, it's just unlimited offsite because they're paying $500 a month, but there were 200 people, <laughs> there were 200 agents in the class day one. Of course, by the last day, there was like 85 because that's life. But still, you know, I think the, Hey, we have it set up for you, you know, $75 a month. You can use it at, in place of your CRM if you want to. I think it's all. And the other thing that Go High Level does that we're going to use is the fact that hypothetically you're running these ads, right? And people are going to the registration page, the landing page. Let's say they don't register, right? You're able to retarget, remarket based on people who clicked on that landing page. The fucking smart people. I think, I think it was cookies. I don't know if they're using cookies anymore, but what it does now is this is another part that I didn't even mention that when people click and they don't register, Drake is starting a retargeting campaign. So when they go back to Facebook now for the next, I think week or whatever time frame he's setting up, they are going to get hit with testimonials, you know, about us. They're going to see our face everywhere. So even though they didn't register now, they're like, Oh my God, these guys are everywhere. Who are they? You yeah. know what I mean? Hell yeah. Pixels. Is That's that the only it? word I know. I have no idea. That's the only word I know. <laughs> Dude, we are the That's smartest. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. That anyway, sorry. Awesome. I, I talked too much. Let's go back. What's number three? Are we done? That's, That's still number, number two. Yeah. So <laughs> number two, carrying on. So I'm curious to know if you know this, but I want to go through the percent or the ratio of how many contacts you need in order to get a client. And this is what I got from, oh shit, I don't, I don't remember which book, but it's in my real estate Bible, which I put like for everybody that joins us. Anyway, it's, it has every single thought I've ever had about real estate sales. So from the most number of attempts that you need to have to getting one client, the most extensive are mailers. And that's 2000 to one. That's a shit ton. And it's costly. Then if you're going to be cold calling or cold internet leads, that's 1600 to one cold calls is 500 to one, 500 cold calls, conversations, not just like attempts, conversations to get one client door knocking is a hundred to one. And if you're in St. Paul, you know, like now that I'm in Minnesota, a hundred doors in the winter or yeah, no, thank you. I'm not, I'm not gonna be doing that. <laughs> but then in the green, like those are all like pretty much red, like a shit ton of effort to then get one client. In the green, we have sphere 50 to one. And that's like pretty much the average for you. If you talk to people that already know and trust you 50 conversations later, you will get one client. So it's just a matter of how many times do you need to have 50 conversations to get the number of clients that you want to have advertisement calls with your information, 25 to one. So as soon as you start getting listings, blast the shit out of that, put like signs everywhere with your face, your phone number, that's 25 to one sign calls. Oh, that's, that's more it 20 to one open houses. It's 15 to one, 15 people, not 15 open houses, 15 people in your open house. So how many, tra how much traffic can you drive to one open house? Don't just spend your time doing open houses and not marketing it because you're just wasting your time there. Walk-ins, if you are in a physical office or what Shelby and I like are Zoom calls that are being booked, that's 10 to one. Past buyers, nine to one. Past sellers is even higher, four to one. Every four past sellers that you talk to will give you a client. Every four, like 
hello. And then referrals is two to one. So I just wanted to go over that because if anyone else is a nerd like me, like literally choose one of the strategies and then just, you know, if you want to get six clients and you're going to be hitting up your past sellers, if it's a four to one, six times four, you know, like how many times can you do that in one day? Do you happen to know, Shelby, what the ratio is for home selling seminars online? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Do you happen to know, Shelby, what the ratio is for home selling seminars online? Girl, I don't know. But- okay. I'll have my own data here. Yeah. In a little bit. And I love this stuff. I I fucking love seeing this too. I am, I do want to caveat though, cold callers out there. If you are a good cold caller and if your lists are dialed in, I am 100% positive that you can do better than 500 to one. So there is that if you are having not great success with cold calling, there are some things that you need to look at yourself. That's all. That's all I was going to say. Like you get, you know what I mean? But other than 100%. that, I feel like, yeah. yeah. If yeah, it's the time of day that you're even calling. It's your enthusiasm, your voice. Are you standing up? Are you smiling? Then your scripts, what kind of, what are you even saying? You know, yeah. like your list. Yeah. It's, it's 500 to one is if you're shitty. <laughs> <laughs> if you suck. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's it. And man, I wish I could remember which book I got this from. It was not the full fee agent. Anyway, don't matter. So Okay. So what I'm doing, going a little bit back into my one-to-one is DMing every single person in Facebook, Instagram, because that's like pretty much 94% of my business has been from Facebook and Instagram from people that know me or are one step removed, strike up a conversation. And yeah, so that is the first step and the second step. Learn your area, learn your new marketing strategy, go ham. And then number three is build your team. So when you go into a new location, with EXP, you just need to get licensed there. You don't need to change your brokerage or you don't need to you know, find a new office or do any shit like that. It's still one cap, one EXP you know, price per month. So what I did is I started attending the, or I have it on my calendar to attend the state meetings. I went to meet the brokers already and they were so nice. They were like, yeah, we're going to be like calling you maybe like quarterly, maybe or twice a year, just to catch up and see how things are going. I'm like, what the hell? That's amazing. That's cool. So, and they're going to tell you like exactly what to do, especially if you're with eXp. I can't really talk to any other brokerage since I've never been with any other brokerage, but with eXp, they will give you the exact checklist for that state. It's going to include all of the lists that you're going to need, like all the websites that you're going to need. I asked them for vendor recommendations and TC recommendations, and they happily provided. So when I say build a team, One, get to know the broker because you're going to want them on your side. Two, ask them for recommendations for any of the vendors. Go into the eXp workplace, or if you're not with eXp and you don't have workplace, Google other other top producing agents in your area and just straight up ask them. They have no incentive to do this, but they just straight up ask them to get their list of vendors that they like working with or the ones that they don't like working with. Which leads me to my golden nugget for today, which is an Excel sheet for vendors that Shelby created. So my golden nugget is Shelby's Excel. <laughs> that has helped me so much. And it's it's just so simple. It like it covers every single vendor that you're gonna need at some point. So fill that shit out now. So that way, as you're talking to sellers, buyers, everybody in between, you can be like, oh, I got a guy. And you fucking do have a guy. You know, so instead of Googling and be like, oh, yeah, I guess this plumbing company, you know, I see them a lot. You don't know if you've ever worked with them. You don't know who has worked with them. So get the behind the scenes. Ask agents that are killing it out there. Ask them for the recommendations. They will happily provide. I went to EXP Workplace. I looked up Minnesota Icon and I was like, dude, can you share your your preferred vendors? And three or four different agents gave me their entire 
vendor sheet. And now I only have just a couple just to fill in like an attorney in case we need one. We don't need attorneys here in the state, but just, you know, stuff here and there. And that helps a ton. So that way you can actually start connecting with those people too. And that is a great way to get clients, you know, like your cleaner, the handyman, et cetera, et cetera. So check out theagentgoldmine.com for today's golden nugget, which is mine that I'm giving, I'm whoring out Shelby's shit. (laughs) And it's super, super helpful. (laughs) Any questions before I continue, Shelby? No, I love it. I did the same thing. I did. I totally wrote the icon in work chat place. Fuck. What is it? I always say the wrong one. Work- workplace chat. <laughs> workplace <laughs> chat. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. So I went there. I did the same thing. I searched for icons in the Kentucky State Group and I DM'd them all along with the brokers. And I got so much information and my preferred vendors are fucking locked down. And it feels great because I also met with, I met with one of the icons for breakfast and I picked her brain about what, you know, what the market questions and also specifically what I wanted to know is what is a strong market? I mean, pfft, what is a strong offer here? I mean, of course I can see how much it lists to close ratio on the MLS, but like how much earnest money, what is the due diligence time frames that are, you know, expected? What are contingencies that are normal? What, what inspections besides, you know, radon is a big thing here. Radon wasn't a big thing in North Carolina. So like meeting with that icon, getting your preferred vendors, meeting with them in person, and then also taking those preferred vendors. And I met with in person, a lender and an attorney, because there are attorneys here, but just those. And now I feel so much more confident. I can just say things that I literally am repeating from them, (laughs) but it's, I trust them because of the amount of closings that icon did. And that I know this lender too, is just a total badass. And now I feel more confident having conversations because I can be like, yes, absolutely. I have people I can refer you to. And it's just that little bit of confidence that allows you to put yourself out there way more than if you're like, I mean, I can help you. And then you're like, wait, I actually don't know if I can though. (laughs) Yeah. Or you give like a shitty recommendation, like somebody that you Googled and they end up being shit. Like then it's on you. You So yeah, definitely workplace meeting with the brokers and, oh, you know what? I realized that we spoke about this too. Like when a couple of episodes ago, but also I want to refer back to the TC. TC is so, so important. Hire a TC and have a backup in the books ready to go. So if you want more information on how to hire a transaction coordinator, Google our episode, how to hire a transaction coordinator. Yes. Shelby did that a couple of episodes ago and it was super, super good step by step. And then adding on top of that, I would join every single Facebook group that you can about your city. Every fucking one, especially if it deals with yeah, housing or anything like that, things to do, the the city, everything. And then it's also easier if you're if you're in workplace as well. You can just add um join every single group related to your state and your city. So open houses, referrals within, you know, Minnesota, just literally any, anything type in your city and add all of those. Shelby has her hand raised. I have one more note for that with, the, especially too, if you're interested, if you have an investor background and people ask you about investing stuff, or you plan on working with investors, there's always those like local investing in Les- Lexington, Lexington, bluegrass, real estate investors. And going there, I found, I just did this the other day and I literally was just like, Hey, who are the best, anyone recommendations for long-term rental and short-term rental property managers. And I got a bunch of people. It was very helpful. And I ended up calling one of the property managers who is also personally invests and he does have his license. He does some things as agents. And I was able to ask, Hey, is the 1% rule possible here? What's the best you're going to get in regard to the ratio of the price to the rental rate? Like our multifamily, a thing here, like how's short-term rentals. And he was able to tell me so much information that will help me save so much time down the road. So that's just another thing too. Yeah, no, I, I like, I agree with that. <laughs> And then also military groups too, like military, or obviously if you are military, but like literally whatever you do, pickleball of St. Paul, you know, like whatever you like freaking doing, maybe the school districts as well, join a school that whatever hobby you freaking have, join the Facebook group and join the workplace group if you're with EXP. So that would include you found a lender that's part of your team. You found a transaction coordinator and a backup. You found all the other vendors that you're going to need. Also part of building your team. Oh, and you've made friends with the broker. The last part of building your team is looking for other agents because you're going to need other agents on your side for when you go on vacation, for when you don't want to work with a certain client, for when, you know, whatever it is, 
and this is what I'm still looking for right now. I'm looking to work sellers. So I want to refer the buyers out. So it's going to be a 50 50 split with an agent that's not brand new, like an agent that knows what they're fucking doing because uh, they're not going to be testing on my clients. Uh, and then so so specifically, if anyone's listening to this and you're in St. Paul, if you've done 10 transactions, at least 10, and you kind of feel like we have a similar personality because it's, again, going on my brand, you know, I'm like going on YouTube, putting my personality out there. The last thing I want is then to to have a buyer work with somebody that's boring and like, okay, let, when do you want to show a house? You know, oh, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose that momentum. So I am, would love to connect with you. But anyway, that's it. Like looking for agents that can, that you can partner up with um, for when you go on vacation, for when you can't show a house, for anything. So start meeting people in person. And that could be with a young professionals group, like EXP Young Professional or the MLS, the association meetings. You can go to those or just start your own meetup. I'm sure there are other meetups out there, but maybe start your freaking own. And then overall, the overriding theme of all of this is being consistent. So back to the one-to-one -one and back to the one-to-many, you cannot give up on social media after you've done 50 videos. You know, like that ain't shit do a hundred videos and then see how many clients have come from that. And before you even quit on that, ask somebody else for feedback and be open to that feedback because you might figure out that you're boring. You know, like you might need, you might not need to, I don't know, you might need to take a shot before you make videos or might your quality of the content might not be there. So in the beginning, I think quantity is more important just to put shit out there and get comfortable in front of the camera or get comfortable whatever with whatever lead gen strategy you're doing. So balls to the wall, doing as much as you can. And then over time, once you start getting feedback from the market, from buyers and sellers, you know, whether you're getting a lot or a little, do more of that and then focus a little bit more, go a little, slide the scale from quantity a little bit higher to quality. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Next. Next. <laughs> then <laughs> the question also that beautiful Tori had was like the resources of like where we get our shit from. And so I broke this down in mine. I'm curious to know yours, but I also don't want to put you on the spot again. You might just be like, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Shelby. <laughs> to a question that wasn't even like a, do you agree or disagree? I'm just like, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yes. <laughs> So where I get my shit from is, so resources, I'm breaking this down for the market, right? Like when you're learning this new market, I use Bright Investor, which is the episode, two episodes ago, look up the agent goldmine Bright Investor, great, great way to find information. And that's how I'm going to start targeting off market leads for my own investing. So Bright Investor and MLS trends, like literally just go on the MLS and look up the high level data, you don't need to go like super, super in the weeds because this I know is going to scare off a lot of people. Again, days on market price, what's the sales, the final sales price to the list price ratio there just to start identifying some major trends. The Realtor Association is going to have that information too. So like the zip codes and neighborhoods that you want to start selling in. And I think the more that you niche down in like one specific area, the more that you dominate that one area, the more then you can kind of grow outside after that. Similar to like just brand, I guess, in general. And I feel everyone says this, like the more that you niche down, like Gary Vaynerchuk like started in like something very, very, very niche. And now he's just like everywhere. Everything content is Gary. And, you know, like Alex Ramosi started in like selling gyms and now he's everything content is, you know, all that shit. So start very, very niche first. So that's where I would get information for the market so that we could start learning for my skills, where I get like my resources from, obviously, number one is five pillars with our scripts practice, the Tuesday calls that are for the business development and every and every other training that we have, like within our community, we have trainings every single day of the week, work week. And then for lead gen, Tube Buddy is a, a huge resource that I use. That's to help me make sure that my titles are kind of on point. It'll give me a little more behind the scenes for YouTube specifically vid chops, like video and like karate chops, vid chops. I do have an affiliate link that will give you $200 off. I use that as an editor and they have, it's, it's so, so good. I no longer have to think about 
I, first of all, I never edited, but I no longer have to think about uploading videos on my YouTube channel. They do the tags, titles, description, thumbnail, and hell yeah. And then I listened to a couple of podcasts like Think Media for YouTube as well. And like I mentioned before, the real Brian Mark, M-A-R-K, and Brian spelled B with an I, he has a podcast called Change Lives, Make Money. And this one is very, I guess, similar to like where Alex Hormozzi started out. He's he's for online fitness trainers, but his sales tactics and scripts are really, really good. So I follow him on Instagram and that's kind of like, I just extrapolate what I need from that to then put into my real estate business. So, and then I, of course, everything that I learn from the books that I read and I everything that I learn, I put into my real estate Bible. Where do you get your resources, inspiration, et cetera from Shelby? So I, you guys may have remembered me talking a lot about Traffic and Conversion Summit (laughs) in the January months. I was really obsessed. I still am. I really like Perpetual Traffic, the podcast. It is, it is more nerdy than I would naturally have. It's Drake and I listened to it together, but it has really opened my eyes to the possibilities within marketing. Cause I do think as a whole, real estate agents have a very, very, very narrow understanding of marketing and the options that are out there when it comes to like true marketing instead of simply usually just a sphere of influence post something on Instagram type of mentality. So that is one that I like to listen to. I also like to listen to Alex Hermosi's YouTube videos. I think they've gotten better and better. Like I really, really appreciate him sharing the videos of him recorded at like conferences where he's speaking at. I feel like he has a different take on pretty much everything. Like, and it's incredibly well articulated and incredibly logical. But other than that, I mean, of course, like what you said, I, I love our stuff that we do in five pillars and I am in taking so much content from all of the interviews that we do here and also the ones that I do on Real Estate Rockstars. And outside of that, I am of the opinion that I do not need more information <laughs> at this point in time. I have the information I need and I know the steps. It's just doing them. So I do think that that is a point where a lot of people getting started out, you need information. You absolutely do. But once you have a plan and you are committed to that plan, be cautious of the amount of things that you continue to intake because it will only lead you to more distraction, shiny objects. Should I do this? Fear of missing out, like this whole fucking rabbit hole that that occurs. And I know you're like, well, I could learn something. Yes, you could get one nugget, but you could get distracted a hundred times to find that one nugget. And in it's not worth it in the grand scheme of things. So you are the only person who can know where you're at in that, whether you need more information or whether you need less and just to execute. So do some thinking on that, I would say to our listeners. And that that's all I have for this. That was better than I agree, right? Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, definitely. Yeah. That, no, that's a really, really good point that I didn't even think about is yes. As soon as you have some nuggets, fucking do it. <laughs> right. Um, don't even ask anybody for help until you've done it. Yeah. Like, just go. Just start. Especially when you ask people, that's the thing. Be weary of who you take advice from. Everyone has a different opinion and they're speaking on their own lens of experiences and their own biases. So intake that information, but then just don't follow a bunch of different people blindly. If you're going to, if you need to follow someone, if you need a guide, that's fine. Pick one and follow them. That's it. Yeah. Do it. Do it again and again and again and again. Yeah. Then when you figure out something is working or not working, let them know and they will guide you. That's how to get a mentor for life. Like super side rant. Oh my God. Somebody the other day messaged me on Facebook and was like, can you look at my most recent post and share your opinion? And I was like, okay, what's this post? And it was like, how do you get $10 million within the next like five years go? And I was like, what in the fuck? First of all, like, why are you asking Facebook? Nobody's going to be just right. sharing their shit out there. And if they are, they don't, and they don't know $10 million. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like the only answer is ask a some ask a millionaire that has 10 million dollars don't i don't know is this yeah so stuff like stuff like that i'm I'm trying to like relay it back to this conversation don't ask other people that just haven't done the shit that you're looking to do right and also don't ask for this check step by step help me and only me and then not fucking make a move like we need to see that you have made moves right and then that mentor will be able to want to help you more Hope totally. I sound like an asshole, but it's like fucking truth. Like we, and that's five pillars too, though, is we do, we do. Yeah. <laughs> and then we ask. That is the cultural expectation. <laughs> yeah. If we don't handle that, that other shit that I see out there. But, okay. I think we did it. Do we do it, Allie? 
yeah, we did it. Let us know if you have any questions. We're both here for it. And yeah, be a bro and share this show. Yes. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps.